Hi, welcome to another video. So, AI coders are something that everyone is using these days, whether it be Klein, Claude Code, Ader, or what I have been using lately, which is Open Code. Now, these tools are cool, but what if you could make a whole team of these AI coders that could accomplish tasks for you asynchronously and easily, while being interactive and running all locally? Well, I thought I'd show you guys how, if you want to create a team of multiple AI coder instances working on different tasks, you can use what I'm going to show you today. Now, technically, you can create a ton of AI terminal windows and just ask each one to get on a task, but that's not only tedious, it's also amazingly bad. Because if multiple AI coders are working on the same project, then one AI coder might overwrite another instance's code, and it just won't work. Plus, Giving one task manually to each one and navigating through them can become very challenging. But to accomplish this, I have a good workflow. So, what I do is, I've come up with a task claiming system. What I do is, I have a task file that contains the tasks I want to be accomplished. Sometimes the tasks are dependent on each other, so I generally try to organize them based on a set of tasks and subtasks that can be accomplished simultaneously. Now, with each task, I have three fields. The branch name. If a branch already exists to be worked on, then there's the status of its current state. Since most of them will run simultaneously, we need to keep track of what's happening. So, it will update the status as required, like if it has been claimed, or if it is in the status of intervention required, or anything like that. I also have one more thing, which is to ask it to store the name of the Tmux session. Now, Tmux is one of the major things we need in order to make multiple AI coders work. So, before we come to the Tmux part, let me talk you through Git work trees. Now, Git work trees and branches are different things. Git work trees are basically just a physical copy of the whole repo or project that you have which means you can actually run them without switching branches and stuff. Although this is still governed by Git, meaning that once the feature is complete, you can merge that work tree back and then get one repo back just like it was, which is quite good. To show it to you in action, you can see that here I have this project and I can just go ahead and run the git work tree add command along with the b operator, then the name of this tree or feature, and then the place to keep the tree, which will be just in the work directory slash feature name. Then, in a bit, it will do that. And you can now see here that it has basically just copied the whole repo, and this can be run and everything. We can merge these back to the main thing, and I'll show that towards the end. Plus, you don't need to do these things manually, as it will all get automated in the next steps. But this is something you can take a look at for a better understanding of how things are working under the hood. Now, apart from Git work trees, we'll also be using another thing, which is called Tmux. Now, what is that? Well, Tmux is literally an abbreviation for terminal multiplexer. It basically allows you to create multiple sessions of terminal running in the background, which you can attach to anytime and see what's going on in there, or run some long running commands and then come back, and you can have multiple such sessions. Let me just show you how it works, so you can understand how it works. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor Surfshark. Are you tired of your online activity being tracked or feeling unsafe on public Wi-Fi? Surfshark's VPN is here to help. Surfshark encrypts your internet connection, shielding your personal data, ensuring your browsing stays private, especially on unsecured networks. It also lets you bypass annoying geo restrictions, giving you access to a wider range of content from around the globe. They are even offering extra four months for free deal on their VPN. If you use my coupon code CODEKING or click the link in the description, you can use Surfshark to unblock multiple AI models or features that are not available in some countries due to geo restriction. But with Surfshark, you can say goodbye to not available in your region part and use the features all you want.
The best part? One Surfshark account supports unlimited devices, and there's also cross-platform support for Android, iOS, Mac, Windows, Linux, all covered. Plus, they offer over 3,200 different servers in more than 100 locations, so you always get a fast and stable connection anytime. Use my coupon code Code King, or click the link in the description to get an exclusive extra four month for free deal on Surfshark. And don't worry, it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee, so you can try it risk free. Now, back to the video. So, this is my general terminal. Now, I have Tmux installed. What I can do is run Tmux new session along with the SA operator with the session name for my own reference, and then it will just get into a new session. And you can see that this is a Tamux session over here. But this is fully separate from the main terminal. So, if I run a Claude Code instance here, you can see that it's running here. And now I can just attach from this session with the Control plus B and then D command, which will bring me back to the main terminal. Now, I can attach back to the Tmux session terminal with the attach command and the session name. And I'll just get attached to that. And you can see that Claude code is still running here, which is quite awesome. This makes it a very good candidate to handle all our AI coding agents running. Now, that is what we are going to use. But how will all this come together? Well, to start, you can choose whatever it is that you want to use between Ader, Claude code, and Open code. All of them are great. I'll be using Claude code for this video because that's what many people would want to use. But the same thing will also work with OpenCode and Ader. So, I'll recommend you create a new command, or you can also keep it in a rule. But with a command, it will work in any project without moving the rules file around in the project directory. So, that is kinda cool. In Claude Code, you can generally create commands by going to the tot Claude commands folder and then creating a new markdown file there. This is the agent spawn workflow. This asks the coder to become an agent spawner and orchestrator. I tell it that it is an agent spawner. It can read the tasks file and then find one or multiple tasks that can be solved by one agent and assign them to a new agent by first creating a new work tree, then building a prompt, and then launching the agent. I ask it to read the tasks file and then select one or multiple tasks that can be solved by one agent. Like, if multiple tasks are dependent on each other, they should be solved by the same agent. If a task is independent, it should be solved by a separate agent. Then, for each selected task to be assigned, we ask it to make a git work tree first, then build the agent prompt, and then we ask it to create the tmux session that is made and detached. And that session will run the Claude Code instance with the prompt and allowed tools of edit, write, bash, and replace. I also ask it that for every agent you launch, update the task's markdown file with claimed status and keep updating as you get new info from the tmux sessions. Now that's it, and we can now finally use it. So, fire up Claude code. Now make sure that you have the task's file figured out. I'm firing it up in King Bench and I have the tasks as first creating a light theme. And then I'm going to ask it to also add a filter to the options as well. Now, we can just go ahead and run the workflow that we created. And what you'll see is that it will just go ahead and first read the task file. Then it will run the git work tree command in order to make the tree. And then it will run the tmux command as well and create the session. And in a bit, it will get done. So, it created the session and everything, and the task should be going on in the sessions themselves. So, you can just navigate to the session in Tmux, and then see what it is doing and everything. It might ask you questions, which you will need to go and answer yourself. But if you don't want to navigate, then you can also just ask Claude Code to tell you about the status, and it will just look at the print of those sessions and tell you what is happening, which is also cool. In a bit, it is done, and you can now head on over to the work trees and just go ahead and run it, and you can see that the light theme works, as well as the second work tree tasks are also done in the other folder. Now comes the part of merging them. So, you can just ask the master Claude code 
to merge them for you, and it should be able to do it easily, which is awesome. This is the best way that I have seen to do self-spawning teams of AI coders working, and this actually makes sense. I see many people opening up multiple terminal windows and then prompting manually by navigating each one, which is pretty bad. But this makes sense and actually works and is really useful for ripping through tasks easily. Tmux also has options like split window and stuff, and you can make it show you all the sessions in a tiled window and so on. So, you can try that if you want to keep an eye on what's happening. You can actually just ask Claude Code to give you the command on how to do that and just open it up in another terminal window. That is how it works. I found this workflow super good and it is actually useful, believe it or not. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.